All right, so what we've talked about Twitter will apply to just about every other network with some variation. When we set up our Facebook, let's say, again, we're going to need to post some content to get people to follow us on Facebook. We'll talk about that later. Let's talk about some strategies to get followers. I still, I've tried so hard so far, I've tweeted five times and I have no followers yet. Well, we need to talk about getting followers. There's lots of tactics here. Um, one way, so I'll list a few here in my notes, strategies to get followers. So one strategy, strategies to get followers. One strategy is follow related accounts to get follow backs. I can follow some accounts and they will follow me back. The way I can do that is when we set this up, if we set this up together, there were all of those keywords and it gave us a bunch of recommendations to follow and I clicked follow. None of them followed me back. But let's try this. On the top right corner it says search Twitter. We can search hashtags or plain old keywords. But Let's say I'm going to search for the keyword birthday cake. The hashtag, remember, has the hash mark, no spaces. There's a slight difference between a regular kind of keyword search and a hashtag keyword search. Don't worry about it just yet. But I'm going to search birthday cake. I'm going to ignore everything that appears here for the moment. I'll just search birthday cake. I'll press enter. What's going to happen here then? Twitter's powerful search screen comes up. It'll show me these are the top tweets related to the word you, ch you, you searched. Um, so tweets that mention birthday cake somehow and they're going to be highlighted. So these are all the top tweets. I can look at live. So minute by minute, second by second, whoever in the world tweets with that word or hashtag will appear right here. So uh, Julia just said this a moment ago with a link to Facebook. They probably auto post it. And then Liv B says, Happy birthday cake. And Megana said that. And Roswell said that. So these are the people that are using that keyword. Okay? So the point of this is this is how I can find accounts to follow. One tactic to get followers is okay, if Liv B is tweeting about birthday cakes and my company sells birthday cakes, she might be interested in the birthday cakes that I sell. So any account that you see, you can hover over and there'll be a button to follow. Now, before you start to go on a follow frenzy, you don't simply want to follow people because I'm telling you to do so. You want to do a little bit of, of vetting, of checking if, they, if you really want to follow. Because whenever you follow an account, their tweets will show up on your home screen. You will see what they're tweeting about. And so right now, Liv is tweeting about birthday cakes. But what if 99% of the time she's tweeting about things that I don't care about or things that offend me? So those things are going to pop up on your home screen every time you log in. Um, you might get a sense of what they're about by seeing their biography. When you hover over any account, if they wrote a biography, it'll show up right there. My trainer doesn't allow me to have chocolates. That's what Nagana's bio is about. Roswell has some other bio here. Nothing. That might not give me the full picture. So I have never clicked on this account. Hopefully it's okay to show everyone. But I'm going to click on her account and that will show her account with her biography and pictures and then I can see all her tweets. So even if, even if I'm not her follower, I can see all her tweets. Even if I have zero followers, people can see all my tweets unless I set my account to private. But everyone's by default is public. So I can look at anyone's Twitter account. I can look at all 11,000 of her tweets if I just keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and hopefully I don't find anything untoward. But the point of this is I can easily follow. I might not want to follow if I'm going to see all this stuff that I don't care to see. The point of the follow also... I will follow. The point of the follow is Liv got a notification in her notification screen that said Victor's Bakery followed you. So anytime you follow account they will know about it. 
if you go to your notification screen, this is the screen that will tell you, did anyone mention you on Twitter? Did anyone like your stuff? Did anyone follow you? So you'll always be up to date there who has interacted with me. Liv got a notification either on her website login or most likely on her mobile phone that said Victor's Bakery followed you. So then it's up to her to look at that and say, okay, great, move on with my life. Worst case scenario. Best case scenario, they say, who's Victor's Bakery? They click on my icon, they go to my profile, and they see that I've got pictures of cakes, and my bio is filled in, and they're interested, and they click follow. That's the long way of saying why it's valuable for you to follow accounts. You will notify people. Right now, no one knows you exist on Twitter. As you start to follow accounts, they will know you exist. And if you have content they care about, they might follow you. Question? If you put your mobile phone number in, do you get any text messages? By default, it shouldn't be sending you texts. You have to activate that. What it will tell you, though, is if you have the app, it will be popping up giving you notifications of your activity, which you can edit. You can turn them all off so that you only see them on the website when you're logged in. But I don't believe on the default you'll be getting notifications via text bothering you. Yes? So you think the notification will be on your Twitter account? It'll definitely be on your Twitter account. What I'm saying is that if someone follows me, I will definitely see it on the notification screen. I don't believe you will get text messages to tell you that. I believe you have to go explicitly into the settings to allow that. Okay. If you have the Twitter app installed, that'll give you pop-ups and notifications that activity is happening, and you can edit and cancel all of those too. Okay. And if you think better of having um, followed somebody, can you unfollow them? Yes. Whenever you're over on your on your following screen, you will see all your followers, and you can easily click unfollow. All your follow followings, yes. So this is one tactic. Follow related accounts to get follow backs. They get notified and may follow you back. I should put here, actually, may follow you back. If you have good content, content that they care about, they may follow. Maybe you've got great content but you sell your products in San Diego and they live in London. They might not follow you. There might be lots of reasons why they don't follow you. It's really, this tactic, honestly, is not the best tactic. It's not a bad tactic, but it's not the best tactic. I'll tell you some of the best tactics right now. But this is a tactic. This is a way for me to start to build an audience. Do some following, and there are limits. I, th I think it's a thousand at a time, a thousand per day. I, think, I thought it was a lot lower. I thought it was only 200 per day some amount. You can't just click follow, 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 follow. Twitter will say, this is a spammer, and stop you from following until the next day. And you wouldn't want to do that anyway. You wouldn't want to follow so many accounts that your home screen is just full of tweets nonstop, full of content. I'm following 22. I can follow some more. I'm never going to get the follow back, unfortunately, from Food & Wine. They're too big. They've got 4 million followers themselves. See that? Four million. But they're only following 684. Unless my content is amazing or I'm a chef, they probably won't follow me. What else? It has suggested I follow... Uh, now, I followed Liv and notice all her stuff is showing up on my timeline, even stuff that perhaps I didn't really want to see. But what else is coming up here? Uh, okay, Epicurious. I followed them. It was suggested I follow them. They've got 2 million followers. They're only following 1,300. Again, you don't have to follow back everyone that follows you. And oftentimes, big accounts will not follow back small accounts. And we're probably some small accounts. So this is not the best tactic. Here's a better tactic. I'm going to say... interact with popular, well, we'll say it this way, interact um, with the followers 
of popular accounts. This is like friends of friends. Epicurious or the New York Times or whatever is not going to follow me back, most likely. But people have followed those big accounts for a reason. People are active with those accounts. Those people that are interested in those accounts, which is the same topic of my account, might be interested in my account. It's a little hard to explain, so I'll show it to you. I'm seeing here on Epicurious the, this tweet with these stats. Likes, retweets, replies. From left to right, they are replies, retweets, likes. Every tweet, even your own, has these interactions. Replies, retweets, likes. I'm going to rearrange them into this order here. Likes, replies, retweets. I rearrange them in this order of their value, and I'll add one more in a moment. These are three possible interactions. I tweet something. I want people to like my tweets. I want people to reply to my tweets. I want people to retweet my tweets. They are of an increasing value in this order. A like, as an example here, people like this photo or this link or this text, and they clicked like. I clicked it too. Epicurious got the notification that said, Victor's Bakery liked your tweet. Epicurious is aware of me. Again, Epicurious will probably not follow me. But if I'm searching cookies, and some just random person, Raymond, wrote something regarding cookies, and I click favorite, or I click like, Raymond got a notification on their screen that said, Victor's Bakery liked your tweet. That again is to make them aware that I exist. Possibly they then follow me. Possibly they go to my account and see my cookie monster picture and they click a like and it ends there. That's why I have this here as the, as the least one. Not that it's bad. A like is not bad. Nothing is bad. The person does nothing else. That's bad. But a like is okay because it shows someone is interested. The next level up is the reply. Now, I wish Twitter would show that statistic here. It doesn't put a number there. They could probably easily program that. You don't know how many people replied to this tweet unless you actually um, click on the tweet to kind of open it up and then you will see. This one doesn't have any... Let's see that one about that beacon. If I look at that, that one doesn't have any either. One of these must have some replies. Okay, here's a reply from Andy. So, on a, on a tweet, if you click on the white area of the tweet, it kind of opens up the tweet. Or if you click on the time of the tweet, it opens up the tweet to focus on it. And then here it tells you 42 retweets, 110 likes. It doesn't tell you a number, but these are the people that have replied. Andy replied, Victoria replied, Syncopated Knock replied. These people liked this photo enough to get to the next level. They replied. They said something. So what if I'm searching for cookies and I see a bunch of people top five cookies. Okay, Cameron seems to like cookies, so I'll reply. Yes, a completely random person that I don't know, I'm gonna reply and say, don't forget What's another cookie? What's that? Another kind of cookie? Does anyone know any other cookie? Oatmeal, Oatmeal raisin. Oatmeal raisin. Oatmeal raisin. 
yes, I am tweeting out to a completely random person. That's perfectly good strategy. Because if this person is tweeting about that topic, it's my topic. My business is about cookies and cakes and all of that. And so here I'm getting the ball rolling. Cameron will get a notification. Victor's Bakery replied to your tweet. Worst case scenario, they ignore it. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Next level up, they might click a like on my reply. And it ends there. Next level up, they reply. They say, that's a good one. I really like that. Oh, do you guys sell them? I don't know. They reply. That's the next level up. They're more active. They're more interested. Maybe I'm starting to build a relationship and maybe a sale eventually. But again, it's much easier to give a, a like and a follow and such to give a buy, to do a buy. But here, yes, I will tweet out to a completely random person. It's okay. I'm going to be positive about it, of course. Positivity breeds positivity. Yes? So do you feel that if you said, don't forget Victor's Bakery, Bakery's Oatmeal Raisin, two-time award winner of Santa, that this could be that spam? That's a little spammy. Is that been bigger on you for business? Yes, exactly. And you don't know. You don't know. Someone might take it well. Someone might not, might, might not take it well. You don't know. I would personally try not to do the hard sell right away. I would try to build a little relationship like this first. Ask a, ask a question, be positive, be on topic. And if they kind of feel like they're replying and being active, then maybe next it's time to follow them. Maybe then they will follow us. And then if they followed us, then they're going to see that tweet eventually that says, sale this Saturday on Victor's Bakery Cookies. So I would not try right away to do the hard sell, because on every one of these accounts, everyone has the ability to click the button that says block. Mm -hmm. And then you'll never be able to communicate with them again. Yeah, but no one's going to block you off of the cookie thing. It just seems like if you're nurturing all these random relationships, and you're a small business owner, that maybe your business is not doing well, and you have a lot of time on your hands. <laughs> No, I wouldn't take that way at all. And again, uh, I teach this and I do this for a living. I do this, we do this for these clients. These tactics have worked. Um, I suppose someone could take it in that way too, but we're not just only spending all our time to tweeting to random people on behalf of the client. We are posting a picture, we are posting a video, we're posting a link, we're doing the sell, we're nurturing, we're building an audience. We have hundreds, we have thousands of followers for these clients. These tactics do work. Not 100% all the time, but to some amount it works. And you know, I can corroborate with the owner that when we share something on Facebook or Twitter or whatever, he says, oh, suddenly I sold more of those, of that product, because we're, we're targeting. This is the marketing. This is, this is what a real-world marketer would kill for. That billboard can't follow you to say, please buy this product. You're going to drive by it and forget all about it. But here, you can be much more active. When I see a reply like that, that doesn't tell me everything I need to know, then I go to the profile and I, I learn a lot more. That's our purpose of why we want to add some tweets first. That's our purpose why we want to add a bio. That's the purpose why we want to add pictures to hopefully try to build a relationship. Now, I replied to some random person. On that particular tweet, it might have been on topic. Every other of their tweets might have been racist tweets. I should have done a little bit more of a research. So I'm telling you right there, I'm making the mistake on purpose. That account could be full of things that I really don't want to be associated with. And I just started a conversation with them. So again, really, you, you, you do this search, you search keywords and all of that, and then you're seeing, okay, Summer tweeted, FYI, fortune cookies. I want to go to Summer's account, and what are they tweeting about, and what are their posts and such, and okay, it seems good. So then I will reply to them and start to build a, a foundation. Let Summer know that I exist. Now, I didn't plan this, of course. I have one notification. Something happened. Something has happened on Twitter with this brand new account that I just created. Hopefully it's okay to show the class. Let's see. <laughs> I'm going to click. What's that notification? Cameron, never. Those things are disgusting. <laughs> I don't know if they are being serious or being funny. I suppose if they were being funny, they would have put happy faces and such. Um, I got a reaction. It could have been positive. It could have been negative. I don't personally think that's very negative. I could try one more time and say, ha ha, 
did you have a bad childhood experience? Now, the way I'm replying obviously relates to the voice of how I'm handling my client's social media. That's what the marketing strategy is for. All of these big companies, Nike, uh, McDonald's, This College, all of these companies have a marketing strategy. How are they going to reply to people? Will they reply to people? Maybe our marketing strategy or whoever's in charge is saying, okay, leave it alone. We're done with that person. Maybe it, we have the plan to maybe put in some levity and some jokes here, and maybe this will turn out eventually positive. That's why the job of social media marketer is a real full-time paying job, could be a real full-time paying job. You could hire someone to run your social media all day, all day long, you know, two hours a day, eight hours a day, whatever, seven days a week. McDonald's has this. Nike has this. Chipotle has this. El Pollo Loco has this. These companies have people that they pay to do this. And sometimes there's these mistakes that someone replies and then, oops, the company gets in hot water because I replied in a way that made it seem offensive. And so this, this is, yes, this is a, this is a tightrope. This is a double-edged sword. This could be very good, could be very bad. But it's the new form of marketing. It's a new form of advertising. That billboard that's up there, that could have also caused you problems. That co happens all the time, a billboard causing an uproar. Here, there's very little to lose. I'm trying to reach an audience here that cares about this kind of cookie. Okay, maybe thinking about it, I'll say, uh -huh. but our oatmeal raisin cookies will surely change cooks, cookies. It's hard to talk and speak at the same time and type. Will surely change your idea. Will change your opinion. <laughs> In this account, it doesn't it doesn't matter. In this account, but if this was a real account with a real website, I put, put perhaps get someone. So I'm yeah. gonna go as far to say, try a free one on the house. Use coupon code cookie 9. On what website? I'm out of space, but you get the idea. You get the idea that what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to further build a relationship with this potential customer. And this is something that I can do with a variation over on Facebook, over on Instagram, over on YouTube, reaching an audience directly for free. In the real world, it's there's a variation of it, but oftentimes not for free. I have to pay someone to go walk around that Plaza Bonita to give out the flyer and try to get people to buy my product, and they're going to ignore me and walk away because they never showed any interest. This might have some interest because they're already talking about baked goods. Yes? What happens when you delete your account? Do all your things stay, or do they... They go away. Yeah, it also, it's all attached to your account, and when that's gone, everything about it is gone. Actually, uh, what I'm doing here is not exactly what I wrote here. What I'm saying is interact with accounts um, active on a topic. I'll, I'll do this one. It's related to it. I mix the two. This one, we will. I will explain that one in just a moment. But what I'm doing here is I'm interacting with accounts. I'm interacting with people that are active on a topic. I'm selling this product. This is my topic. I want to try to interact with people that might care about it to reply to me, to like my stuff, to follow, because this is the higher level. We'll talk about retweets in a moment. The highest level of all of these is the follow. The like is very transitory. Again, it's not bad. It's just the lowest level because someone can click a like to my stuff and move on. What's next? Someone can click reply and at least they have to think a little bit to reply. Maybe they just simply reply OK and that has some value, but maybe they reply like this and I might convert them into a sale. I'll talk about retweet in a moment, but the highest level is after my efforts, they might follow me. I got another follower to build up that 1% rule. And all I did was do a little conversing on topic on Twitter. Question? Um, you know sometimes somebody will make a, like a really bad tweet and then they'll erase it, but mm -hmm. then it goes all in the news and somehow somebody caught, 
caught the tweet before it was erased? Yeah. How do they do that? Do they are they constantly recording everything that's? Well, if people are vigilant, um, the default on a Windows computer is that if you press the print screen button, that makes a copy of whatever's on your screen. So people could click that print screen, and then they can save it over to somewhere else. So maybe someone saw it and, oh, this is so offensive, and then they copy it right there. I just copied Time to Break's tweet. I have it. They deleted it, but I have a copy of it. So that's what people do all the time. Uh, with especially active accounts being very offensive all the time, and those people shall remain nameless, um, people copy those types of tweets all the time for evidence, <laughs> and it doesn't go away. Yes? So, um, you could look at somebody, without following somebody, you can look at their tweets by clicking on their account? Is that what you're saying? Yes, unless like they set it to private. You click on Randy, you can look at Randy's tweets. Yes. Unless they set it to print. Notification the way LinkedIn gives a notification? No, not on that. You can look at anyone's account and they won't see that, but if you interact with them in any way, they will then see that. Okay, another rep another notification here. Let's see how this is going. Cameron Wright liked your tweet. Okay, that's where it ended. So, um, that may end it then with this particular person. I can decide to further try to nurture this. It was just a simple like. Again, it's the lowest level. They give a like, they move on with their lives. Um, so, okay, I'll end it there. Let me search again, cookies. Retweet is the next higher level because the retweet might be might be that you see some tweet from someone, you like the tweet so much, you want to click the retweet. What that does is it basically copies and shares their tweet to your followers. You've spread someone's tweet to more people. Look at it on the flip side. I have 10 followers and I tweet something. One of those followers retweeted my tweet and they had a thousand followers. Yeah. Suddenly I reached 1,010 people. Not just the 10 that were following me, but that one that liked it so much they retweeted it to their 1,000. That's why I want to get retweets. I want to get my message spread out to more people, friends of friends. One way to give, to get things, is to give things. If I give likes, I might get some likes back. If I give replies, I get some replies back. If I give retweets, I get some retweets. So you can take anyone's tweet and click the retweet button and then it pops up here. Do you want to send a copy of their tweet off to your followers as is, or do you want to further add a little bit of comment <coughs> to that? If you add a little more, you're gonna, you can add 140 more characters or so to whatever they said. And I can, you know, I really like that tweet and I want all my followers to see it. The point of that again is Amber Jean will get a notification that says Victor's Bakery retweeted you. They know I exist. They then can like something of mine, reply to something of mine, retweet something of mine. How many followers does she have anyway? 996. If she retweets anything of mine, I could reach 996 more people. Right? I have zero followers. I can get a quick boost in popularity right now if she retweets anything of mine. If it's good enough, it's, if it's on topic. And when I choose to spread the message someone else's, I want that eventually. Let me see. There are worse things in life. Like no cookies. So the purpose of that is that was sent off to my followers and she got a notification. I might get some sort of reply. Again, the reason I'm doing this searching and I have it on live is because these people are active right now. You saw that that other person, whatever his name was, uh, Cameron, He's active right now, and he was and he was starting to reply to me. He's active. He might be he might be interested, and again, I've already gone to eight tweets so far, but I built up a few tweets before I started to interact with people. 
to have something to hopefully entice them. I'm probably not going to get any follows because, again, I just look like a generic account, even though I'm being active. I want to put my logo and colors and such as soon as I can. How does it when you retweet, even if you don't write a message, the people you retweeted to, they see that it's from Victor's Bakery? Yes, and you can see that within my own stream here because I never followed, I never followed Peyton, but it says Live B retweeted. I followed Live B, and now she's retweeting something from Peyton. So I'm seeing someone else's stuff, and it's credited to the originator, Peyton, by Live B. Yes? How did you get to that bar that said live? What was it? Whenever you search, Whenever you do search for anything, you will see then here, show the top tweets. It keeps showing me this, this NFL tweet. Okay. So if I go to live, then it's going to show me all tweets right now about this stuff. Okay. Yeah. I can look at accounts that have cookie in their bio. Remember when I said that, if you put those keywords and stuff in your bio, people can find you that way. Photos about cookies, if people are sharing uh, cookie photos. If you're sharing pictures about cookies, videos that people have shared, more options. So this is the second way to get some more followers. This is a little more effective. It's more time consuming. I have here, interact with the accounts active on, on a topic. So it takes a little bit more effort. Give some likes, get some likes. Give some follows, get some follows. Give some retweets, get some. It's not going to be one-to-one, -one, unfortunately. It's not going to be that you gave seven likes and you'll get seven likes back. It's not going to be that you follow 12 accounts and you'll get 12 followers back. It's never exactly like that. But the more you do this, the better. The last one, and then we're going to get out of time. We're going to run out of time. Interact with the followers of popular accounts. I think this one's a little bit more powerful because what I was going to say about that one is you are following these accounts on a particular topic, Grub Street. I followed an account because it's about food. I'm seeing that their tweet, let me find a better example. I'm seeing here that 19 people like this already. 12 people retweeted it. Some amount of people replied. I wish you would tell me the number. That Twitter can tell me exactly who liked that. If someone, if I was a hamburger joint and I see that someone likes this hamburger, I want to know who those 19 people are that like that hamburger. I want to get in touch with them. You can easily do that by clicking on either the blank spot of the tweet or the time of the tweet. And all of them are listed right there. Show me who liked it, show me who retweeted it. Those are people that have been active on a topic that I can then reply to that I can then follow, that I can retweet, that I can make them aware that I exist. Okay, show me who liked it. Nagma, Mercedes, Richard, etc., etc. And again, I can easily click follow there. I wouldn't recommend it until you check out their account. These don't have a bio. Food TV has one. Jessica has one. Lover of music, my city, family and friends go bills. If being a groupie was a job, I'd be rich. So. These are people perhaps I want to be more active with. Jessica liked something about food. Is Jessica writing anything more about food? Then I'm going to reply. I'm going to follow. I'm going to retweet. So this is, this is what I'm saying about this third one. Piggyback on the popularity, on the activity of big accounts check out who is being active on these accounts so San Diego magazine shared this there's three there who who are they so I can click on the time if someone likes something from San Diego magazine most likely they're in San Diego so is my business so I'm gonna look who retweeted it I'm gonna click there so James R Wilkin and Jules Arthur retweeted it. Southern California attorney freelance. Okay. I can click follow. They'll get a notification. Victor's Bakery followed you. They might follow me back. They'll see in my bio. I'm there in San Diego too. They're, they have baked goods. I like baked goods. They might follow me. 
I'm building my followers because it's a captive audience. When I tweet, buy this, use that coupon, do this, do that, I have a captive audience. Hopefully that'll follow through. What I can also do about piggybacking on the popularity of my popular people, I can go to an account and see exactly who the followers are also. I can click to see the list of all the people that have in been interested in this top in this account so that then I can start to go directly to them. Tweet to them, follow them, reply to them. Yes, some of them like right right away. I'm seeing these three accounts here. Five of them have never put in their picture. They might be spam. I don't know until I click to view. So don't just click just don't click follow to everything. You have to check. So Hovi and you know all these accounts. These that have a lock, you cannot see their tweets. You'll notice most of them you can see their tweets. If they made it private, you can't see the tweet. There's a lot of people that have followed San Diego Magazine, and I might want to start to interact with some of these. David, Michelle, Kim, etc. This is a this is a better. Oh, I have another notification up here. <laughs> Amber Jean liked your tweet. Okay, wow. she just gave me a like, and that's it. I would have I would have liked better a retweet, but I got a like. So that might be, and this list will stay here, so maybe later on I'll think, okay, they might be interested. Later on, maybe I'll try to further get them to follow me. So again, I can teach Twitter for a whole month. We're out of time. They stopped paying me five minutes ago. Oh. <laughs> Final questions? I saw your hand first, yes. When you're inside the app, you can always have a you have conversations, uh, you have engagement. Mm -hmm. Let's suppose that uh, I just don't remember what you did tonight. You created your uh, Twitter account, but now you're going to send a text to a few people or an email. Mm -hmm. What do you do? You just put the full URL in the, in the body of the text or the email so you have a hyperlink to that? A hyperlink back to your Twitter profile? Exactly. Yes, you're going to get it by going back to your view profile, and that's your Twitter address. Your Twitter address is the username you created. So yeah, that link, that address right there, that's your Twitter address. You can then share that on an email, on a text message, on your website, on your business card. But whatever username is there, that's your full address. What was that? My folder. Oh, let me show everyone just one moment. Again, I could we could go on, but we're out of time. The things that we're about to talk about for the next day, we will reiterate some of these concepts. I'm going to put my notes in the network folder. Let me remind everyone where my notes are at. The only where you can get them is on campus. But to get to the network folder, you want to open computer window at the top left. In the network location, classroom data, open that. And then our class folder is campus social one. The syllabus is in there, and the notes that I wrote have today's date. You can copy that, print it out, whatever you want, email it to yourself. If you have a USB drive, plug that in and take these. We'll do it again next week. We'll talk about the next network, which is uh, Google+. Plus. We'll see that some of the concepts of Google+, Plus also come over from Twitter, and vice versa. So thank you for coming. We'll do it again next week.